Welcome back to another video. My name is Jack Newman. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a really exciting case study of one of our newer clients, how in just 45 days, we've taken their account and we've essentially doubled the overall return on ad spend that as a store, they are achieving. So if we take their entire spend across their advertising accounts, and we look at their entire return, we're now up over 100% of what they were previously doing. And in this video, I'm gonna drill into those statistics. So first of all, what I'm going to do is just show you how we're tracking this. So this is our management sheet. This is what we're using to actually make decisions and track their return on ad spend, their CPA, all of the key headline figures. Um, and there's tons and tons of data. So what we do is we actually go through with this brand and with all the clients that we work with every single day and we update a sheet very, very similar to this. And this gives us an extreme level of visibility on what is actually happening within the platform. Now there's a few kind of nuances to this sheet and a few kind of specific things that make this very actionable. And I'm gonna talk about that in this video. The first thing um, is that when we're looking at the this column here, this source of truth, this is everything across their entire store. So this isn't just what Facebook's reporting or Google Ads is reporting. This is their entire store-wide revenue. And what we do here is we look at their entire store-wide CPA. So this figure is essentially looking at all of the spend, which is this total summary of yellow sections here, where we're looking at all of the on-platform reported figures. So again, you know, we're looking at the Facebook ROAS, we're looking at the um, what Google Ads is reporting, and we're totaling that up in these columns here. Now, when you look at this, the first thing that might stick out is that the actual on-platform ROAS is extremely low. So you can see here, we're looking at like a 1.1, a 1.0, 1, a 1.6, a 1.5, and then of 3.10, which is the month that we're now um, managing. One thing that's really important to know is these statistics are stripped out on a one day post click attribution window. So we're not looking at seven day attribution windows, 30 day attribution windows. We're not trying to make the account look as good as humanly possible. What we're doing is we're looking at what happened one day after the click. Now for this specific brand, they're a higher ticket e-commerce brand. So they're selling physical products, but they're typically around the kind of 600, 700. You can see the average order value here. We're looking at, around, you know, if I, if I look at this and look at the average, um, it's around 600 is their average AOV. So they're in the furniture space so they're selling higher ticket items, okay? Now, we tracked how long it typically takes from someone to go from a first click to a sale, and that's typically around five days. So their kind of lead to sale, their first click to sale time is around a five day window. So why would we track it on a one day? Well, the reality is what we wanna do here is we wanna simplify the way that we're looking at the data and we wanna standardize it. So if we're looking at data that's potentially seven days, you know, we have to track seven days to see if there's gonna be additional sales, we're looking at what's the impact of these ads and we're, we're waiting an insanely long time to get that data back and then maybe some delayed attribution happened and we're then looking at um, you know, ads that we previously turned off that we've now got to turn back on again. It becomes very messy and it's not as productive as looking at, right, what happened one day post click and then let's just improve that metric. And by improving that one metric, we're actually able to rise up the entire account because of course the people that are buying two days, three days, four days, five days after, that number is also increasing. So as long as we consistently improve the one day post click attributed results, the key metrics, which for us is generating sales for this business, we're gonna be heading in the right direction. That's the approach we took. So all of these averages, all of this data here, um, is completely stripped out and on a one day post click attributed window, just to be 100% clear with that. And you can see there's a ton of data, I'm not gonna drill into everything, but the key things I wanna talk about is what they were doing before, what we changed, and now what's happening. Because you can see here, this 21.15X ROAS is in a considerable um, improvement. You can see the CPA has dropped as well, it's now 34 pounds, which is the lowest it's been, um, and the average previously was, um, if I look at the average before we came on board, which was these three months, uh, was 44 pounds, so like not to tenor essentially off that um, CPA. And you can see here the actual on Facebook one day post click attributed results. Again, we're looking at a 3.10 so far for the month to date, um, when previously we were looking at an average of around 1.2. So you can see a massive improvement here. Now, look, what did we do? What's caused this? And what were they doing before? So first of all, um, just to be 100% clear, April, May, and June were months that um, I've input the data from, and that was prior to us working with this brand. Then months, July and August, was us working with the brand. So you can see initially, it actually took a bit of a drop around a 10X row, and I'm gonna talk about that. Um, the CPA increased slightly, but now we're well on track with um, what we're doing, and we've really got into a groove with this account. So when we came on board, the first thing I noticed was, 
They're investing a lot of their money into campaigns that have no real trackability and they have no real um, statistical uplift when I actually look at what's happening. So they were running um, a page likes campaign and this was around, I think, 20 to 30% of their daily budget was spent on a page likes campaign. And of course, that's, you know, it's got some utility, but it's not going to result in sales. Um, there was no track sales on that campaign. It was just spending, you know, like around 20 pounds a day, not really doing much. You can see the sort of average daily spend if we look at Facebook here. Um, you can see any one of these days, you know, it's around 160, 180, that sort of uh, year range. So they were spending a, you know, a fairly decent chunk on just like a page likes campaign. The second type of campaign that was previously running was a traffic ad. And this was spending, I think, around £50 per day. So it had quite a high budget. It was generating tons and tons and tons of clicks. Like they were getting 11 pence per click, very, very low CPC. However, the actual CPA on that advert was completely untrackable because they didn't have any pixel tracking set up on that campaign. So it was completely just blind in the sense of what they were actually getting back from it. It was no way of telling. There was no add to cart tracking, there was no purchase tracking, nothing. So it was just sending a ton of clicks. And obviously we can assume there was some uplift from that. Um, they spent, you know, I think around 50,000 pounds over the last several years on that campaign. I mean, it's crazy the amount they were investing in that with no real visibility. However, I'm sure it had some uplift along the way, but probably not to the amount they've actually expensed on it as a reality. So we came on board and we immediately cut those two campaigns and replaced them. The third type of campaign that they were running was a purchase objective conversion campaign. And there was a mixture of retargeting ads and front end campaigns. Now they were targeting to a lot of different audiences. They were testing like some interest that may be related to someone buying a new home or just moving into a new home, like right move all these different kind of interests. Um, groups, maybe some competitors. And they were also running retargeting campaigns using dynamic product ads. So they had quite a lot going on and their actual daily budget is fairly low. So as you can see, they're only spending around 4K, 5, uh, around 5K per month is what they're spending prior to us coming on board. So we immediately reduced their investment in the page lights campaign and the traffic ad campaign. And what we did was we focused in on the purchase conversion campaigns because these are the most likely to generate customers and from our experience, the most profitable campaigns that we can run. So we immediately stopped investing in things that weren't really having an uplift and immediately started investing into things that were having an uplift. And they were already getting fairly decent return on ad spend on platform on Facebook. So. We started running those purchase conversion campaigns. Now, rather than investing into different audiences, we decided to go broad with the account. So we took away that variable of testing your home interest audiences, um, you know, people that have maybe moved, people that are interested in furniture, garden furniture, all this different stuff. So we went broad with the account. Now, the first thing that happened, as you can see, is the actual ROAS and revenue dropped quite significantly in that first month, okay? Now, why did that happen? Now, that's a range of factors. One actually is seasonality. This brand, when we came on board, they were immediately expecting their revenue to slow down in that month. Now, it was just kind of the interesting timing of us coming on board as an agency, and this happens from time to time. You know, I like to really kind of feel responsible and be responsible for the outcomes of the clients that we're working with. So I'm always looking at what we're doing as a company. I don't like to kind of rely on seasonality and kind of blame that as a factor. However, it is a reality. You know, if the um, you know, if there's a month that's typically lower volume for a business, you have to understand that. So you're not looking for data and you're looking for reasons why things aren't working that simply aren't there. So that was the first thing to bear in mind. The second thing is around 50% of our investment in that month was spent on testing different product groups. So we were testing their main flagship products that around 80% of their historic revenue had come from. And we were also testing some of the slightly lower ticket items to see what people were responding to. And what we found overall is that their main product set that was around 80% of their revenue that is what was producing revenue on Facebook. That's what was getting add to carts, purchases, a decent return on ad spend, and was ultimately having an uplift low business. So in month two, the first thing we've done, and this is where you can see in August, um, and it's around the 20th of August as we're recording this video, and this data was set up until the 19th, I believe. So just one day behind, if I scroll down. Yeah, the 19th of um, August. So you can see what we've done here is we've started to now invest solely into what we found was working. So we took away all of our investment into the conversion campaigns that were for products that simply weren't really generating a return. And we also invested 100% of it into the campaigns that were working. So we've really kind of consolidated our spend. We've simplified the account. We're spending on one type of campaign, one type of audience, and really one type of product, okay? This is now starting to see a remarkable increase in performance, as you can see. We're generating now their overall store CPA is £34. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and say all of these sales, all of this revenue 
has come from Facebook. It has not. We can see the Google Analytics, we can see the tracking on Shopify, we can see that a lot of these sales are coming through organic, they're coming through Google, they're coming through SEO, they're coming through a range of different sources. And I'm not going to sit here and say, look, 100%, this is down to us. But one thing that we 100% can say is that this is a remarkable improvement and this is not just a insignificant month to month variation, okay? You can see here that we've almost doubled the average. So the average ROAS was around 13 and it's now 21 for the month. And this might fluctuate a little bit, maybe it drops out to an 18 by end of month, maybe it increases to a 22, 25, whatever, okay? The CPA as well, you can see here, the average was 44, it's now 34. So you've reduced that significantly. Um, and these are real business metrics which are gonna improve the brand. We've also spent less, okay? August, we've only spent 2.1,000 pounds so far. We're starting to scale up now, we're really seeing a return. Um, but we reduced some of the spend. Simply by not investing in campaigns that were not performing, we were able to actually improve the ROAS. So it's as well, you know, a really actionable step is stop spending money where it's not working. That's something you can do right away if you're, you know, if you're already investing in things that are losing money, stop doing that. Start investing in the things that are gonna win and when you see them win, invest more and more and more into them. Um, so that alone, turning those two campaigns off that I mentioned at the beginning of this video had an improvement to the campaign, had an uplift. So look, overall, that's what we're doing right now. You can see the one day post um, click attributed results is again significantly up we're looking at a 3.1 times ROAS um, the CPA as well has reduced so we're looking at a 243 pound one day post click CPA even in July which was a month before you can see we'd reduced the CPA the ROAS just wasn't quite where it needed to be for a range of different reasons um, and you can also see again you know that the average it was coming down it was you know, a 442 350 366 we came on board 252 and that's a 243 and there's room to uh, you know, to reduce that even further again add to cart you can see is the lowest it's been since we you know, started to track this data and we're looking at a 31 pound add to cart there on that account so great results um, we've also got a higher percentage of revenue so the actual tracked post one day um, click attributed revenue is at a higher percentage since we've come on board so we're looking at a 15 percent for last month and a 14 percent for this month which shows again that the campaigns that we're running are actually having a measurable impact on the business um you know, back when it was around a seven or a nine it's less significant in terms of how much that's actually you know how much of the revenue is facebook responsible for on just a one day post click, you can see we're improving that number and it's getting larger. So I'm gonna end the video here. There's quite a lot of data on this sheet to drill into. There's tons and this is how we really analyze accounts and see what we're doing, what's working, what isn't. There's loads of stuff that I mentioned in this video that I think will be really valuable if you're running an e-commerce brand or any brand on Facebook. And this doesn't just apply to Facebook, of course. We have very similar documentation for Google PPC as well. And it all ties into the overall way that we manage an account. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in working with me and my brand, there's a link in the video description where you can click that and you can book a call and we can spend some time going through what your business does, um, how we could potentially help improve the results and if we're a good fit for each other. Either way, please like and subscribe to this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.